So the presentation will be given by uh, Guilhermina Cledu from uh, the University of Minho in Portugal. And um, it is about the uh, featured uh, team automata. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. Um, let me try again to share the screen. Um, so can you see the presentation? Yes, thank you. All right, uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, so hi everyone. Um, so this work is um, showing collaboration with uh, Maurice Terwick, Rolf Henniker and Jose Provenza. And let me start uh, by giving you some motivation uh, for this work. So uh, this work was on top of a previous one by some of the authors where they study safe communication of team automata uh, which are a system of communicating components uh, where components interact by synchronizing over shared actions. And each uh, component is represented by a labeled transition system where we have uh, input and output actions. And the idea is that each action can have a um, synchronization type that specifies how many components can synchronously execute that action. And regarding safe communication, they were focusing on the absence of message loss and indefinite waiting. So our motivation for this work comes from the fact that many of these systems today are highly configurable. So we end up having a large set of very similar systems that share a lot of behavior, but differ in some other. So we say that we have um, many configurations of the same uh, systems, and sometimes hundreds of them. So as you can imagine, analyzing safe communication uh, configuration by configuration, it quickly becomes unfeasible. So our approach is to have a feature team automata instead, where we model these families or sets of team automata as a software product line. And the idea is that uh, we have a single model that captures uh, the behavior of all configurations, and such that this model is parameterized by features, which are just uh, Boolean variables that represent some functionality of the system. And by selecting different set of features, we can derive different configurations uh, from the model. And there is a feature model that is um, a feature expression or a Boolean expression over, over features that specify what are the valid configurations that we can derive. And here, each component is now a feature transition system, which uh, had, had been introduced before uh, by Klassen et al, where um, transitions are annotated with uh, feature expressions that uh, express in which configurations that transition uh, is going to be present. And our goal here is to study a safe communication at this level uh, and guarantee that if the family model ensures safe communication, then all configurations will ensure it as well. And this should be in general more efficient than uh, checking safe communication uh, system by system. So um, let me now go into more detail on how these two works relate and what is our contribution on top of the previous work. So in the previous work, we could have this uh, system of communicating components. Uh, here we have uh, two users and a server where the users try to communicate by sending a showing or leave message to the server. And the idea is that in principle, there is no restriction on how many uh, components can synchronize over an action. So this means that the system can have transitions, for example, where uh, user one sends a showing message to the server. Uh, we can have transitions where both users synchronize by sending a showing message to the server. And furthermore, we can have a transition where the server alone synchronizes over the reception of an action showing uh, where there is no uh, senders. So these kind of transitions might be undesirable depending on the context. So what they did in the previous work was to have these uh, synchronization types that uh, basically assign for each action uh, uh, using intervals, they specify what is the valid number of senders and receivers uh, that can synchronize over that action. So here, for example, for action showing and leave, we have that uh, we allow uh, one or more senders and exactly one receiver. So now if we put these two things together, uh, they can derive a team automata, which is a label transition system that is going to have only those system transitions that satisfy the synchronization type. And as I, say, uh, as I said, um, they were studying safe communication over these teams. And I'm only going to talk about receptiveness, which means there is no message loss. 
uh, because it's the one that we focus on this work. And the idea is that if you're in a team state and locally you see that there are some components that are enabled to send a message, then in order, in order to avoid message loss, these components should be able to send that message in the team and such that uh, that message is received. So what they did to verify this was to annotate each state with receptive requirements, which specify uh, which components can send which actions in this state. So here we have, for example, that uh, we have user one and user two can send a joint action either independently or jointly uh, in accordance with the synchronization type. So once that they have these requirements for every state, they can check if the team satisfies those requirements. And if it does, it can be either receptive or weakly receptive. And that means that there is no message loss. So in this work, we now have a set of systems. So we now have feature systems uh, where each component is a feature transition system. And in this case, we have a feature system that has uh, two features a lock and an open lock that represent a secure and open access to the server. And this feature model here, it, it says that we have exactly two valid configurations here. One that has only the feature lock and one that has only the feature open lock. And the idea is that uh, if we are in a secure uh, um, access uh, configuration, then users after they join, they must wait, they must wait for a confirmation uh, from the server before doing some work. Otherwise, they can just join and start doing some work. So uh, if we now select a configuration, uh, for example, the open access one, we can derive the model for that configuration, uh, which in this case, it was the one that we had before. And again, here we can have synchronization types, except that now it makes sense to have uh, different synchronization types in different configurations. Uh, for example, uh, we might allow in, a, in an open access configuration, we might allow more than a user to synchronize with the server at the same time, but perhaps in a secure um, configuration, it might be desirable that only one user can synchronize with the server at a time. So now we have feature synchronization types that uh, they do exactly that for each configuration and for each um, action, they assign a synchronization type. And if we select a configuration, we can get the synchronization types for the actions in that configuration. And now if we put these two things together, we can derive now a feature team, which is a feature transition system now instead of a label transition system. And so far, these two extensions are very straightforward. However, however here things get uh, a little bit more complicated. And because now, for example, we cannot discard transitions uh, from the system that don't satisfy these synchronization types, because now a transition might satisfy a synchronization type in a configuration, but not in another. So we need to annotate transitions with feature expressions uh, that capture in which configurations that transition is present. And we can check for uh, receptiveness as well. And for this, we again annotate states with requirements. And similarly, um, requirements might be uh, relevant in a configuration, but not in another one. So we again annotate these requirements uh, with feature expressions to capture in which configurations they, uh, they are relevant. And if we select a valid configuration, then we can derive the team automata uh, for that configuration. And our first uh, result and contribution of this work is that, uh, well, this diagram uh, communes. Um, as a second uh, contribution, we have an online prototype where we can specify this feature team, uh, feature systems and synchronization types and automatically generate the feature team uh, with the requirements. And the third and more important result is that we can now check for uh, receptiveness at the team at the feature team level. And the feature team is going to be receptive if and only if all the configurations are receptive. So um, this is the big picture of, of our work and our contribution. And I would like now to just exemplify how uh, we build these feature teams, uh, particularly how we build uh, the transitions and the requirements and how we check for compliance for those uh, requirements. 
So let's start with transitions. If we have the example from before, and we consider this transition, uh, this team transition where uh, both users synchronize with the server uh, by sending a join action um, by execute by synchronizing over these three transitions. Then, in order to capture in which configuration this transition is going to be present, we need to consider uh, two things. The first one is that, well, for this transition to happen, these three transitions must be present. And these transitions are present if their future expression, all of them, are satisfied. So uh, this is our, our first restriction. And secondly, um, this, tran this transition makes sense only in configuration where the synchronization type of the action showing and allows to have two senders and a receiver. And if we consider these synchronization types for the action showing, where in a secure access configuration, we have only one sender and one receiver, and in an open access, we have one or more senders and one receiver, we can see that this transition is only uh, valid in this configuration. So we have a, a feature expression that captures exactly that. Uh, so this, is the, this process is, is the same for all other transitions. So once that we have the feature uh, team built, we can start annotating the states with requirements. Uh, so if we consider the initial state of the team, we have these three requirements for when uh, user one can send a show, uh, and user two can send a showing message, either uh, independently or jointly. And I'm only going to exemplify for this requirement, but the process is the same for the other ones. So in order, in order to uh, annotate this requirement uh, with a feature expression that captures in which configurations is valid, we need to consider uh, now three things. And the first one is that this requirement makes sense in configuration where user one can effectively send a show message. And if we look at the automata, uh, this makes sense. Uh, the user one can send a strong message either in a secure um, configuration or in an open configuration. Um, so this is the first uh, restriction. Uh, secondly, um, this requirement makes sense in configurations where one sender for action join is allowed. And in this case, both configurations allow uh, one sender at least. So uh, this requirement, uh, we add this new restriction, uh, which is a feature expression, which in this case is coincides with the feature expression of the feature model that captures exactly uh, both configurations. And third, we need to, this requirement makes sense only in configurations where this state is reachable, otherwise it doesn't matter. So this is the initial state, so it's reachable in every configuration. So we have, again, the same uh, restriction as before. And we can do this same process for all other requirements uh, in every state as well. So once that we have the requirements in every state, we can start checking for compliance. And if we consider the same uh, state from before, and I'm only going to focus on the first requirement, uh, in order for the feature team to satisfy this requirement, we need to find uh, for every configuration where this uh, requirement is going to be present, which in this case are both configurations, we need to find an outgoing transition from this state uh, where user one can effectively send a showing message and there is at least one receiver uh, to receive it. And in fact, we can find these transitions for this example, for this uh, requirement. And if we can find such transitions for every requirement in every state, we say that the um, the feature team is receptive, and in which case we have that there is no message loss. But uh, let's consider this uh, state over here, where we have at least this requirement that uh, user one can send a showing message in this state. Uh, we can see that this requirement is not going to be satisfied uh, because this server is in a state where it can only send a confirmation, uh, so we will not be able to receive the showing message from the user one. However, if we relax this notion of compliance a bit and we allow the server to perform that action, to send that confirmation, then it will reach a state where it, it is now ready to, to receive that joint message. So we have this notion of weak compliance where the idea is exactly that. We now check that uh, for every configuration where this requirement is present, which in this case is only this one, we need to find now 
uh, an outgoing sequence of transitions from this state where first we allow some components that are not user one to execute some actions in order to reach some state where now uh, user one is enabled to send an action and there is someone ready to receive. And if we can find this sequence of transitions for every, um, for every requirement in every state, then we say that the feature team is weakly compliant, uh, weakly receptive. So again, we have the, the, that uh, there is no message loss. So this is just a screenshot of our prototype that you can uh, play with online. And we have some widgets where we can specify the, the feature uh, system and the synchronization types. And we can automatically generate and visualize the feature team and with the requirements and get some statistics about number of configurations, states, transitions, and so on. Uh, for this, we have to use a SAT solver to solve the feature model and be able to characterize uh, transitions and requirements with feature thresholds. And just to wrap up, so in this work, we build on top of a, a previous work on safe communication of team automatas, where we now have, uh, we talk about families or sets of team automatas, and we are able to verify for um, receptiveness, which is no message loss at the family level instead of uh, doing so uh, system by system or team by team. And to hint on some future work, uh, there are many possibilities. Um, the obvious one would be to check for responsiveness as well, which is uh, that there is no component that will wait uh, indefinitely, indefinitely for an action that will never arrive, for an input that will never arrive. And this is something that it was done in the previous work. We could uh, check for compliance. We can uh, extend the prototype to check for compliance. Uh, we could talk about compositionality of feature teams and see what happens to receptiveness if we compose uh, feature teams that are receptive. And uh, we could be smarter about this uh, receptiveness at the family level. And instead of saying that we um, a feature team is receptive if all configurations are receptive, even if and only if all configurations are receptive, uh, we could already capture at this level for which configurations uh, the feature team is receptive. Um, so that is all. Uh, thank you so much for your attention and we are happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, so um, do not hesitate to raise your hand, please, or uh, write uh, questions in the chat if you have. Um, I will start with a naive question. So um, um, with your uh, formalization and uh, uh, the tool that you presented, you can uh, convert uh, um, uh, a specification into a label transition system that you show here on the figure. Uh, so um, can you detail a little bit more uh, what kind of properties do you check uh, on the transition system? Can you couple this with a, a, a mm. model checker from uh, for LTSs, for instance, to check behavioral properties or is it uh, of uh, no interest for, uh, for the application? No, yes, we could uh, we could integrate this with some model checker. Uh, right now, we are not checking for for receptiveness in the prototype. So right now, we can only specify and gen automatically generate uh, the feature um, the feature team automata and the requirements. But we don't check for compliance. Uh, but yeah, it, this is something that it would be interesting to do to perhaps translate this uh, feature transition system to some other model checker. And take and take the advantage of, of that model checker to to check for compliance. Um, okay. Yeah. And um, I would have a, a, another question. So when you introduced the, the feature uh, team automata, I was wondering if you can use this formalism of, uh, to specify um, security policies or, uh, uh, for instance, uh, resource isolation and things like this, and uh, you can use it for uh, enforcing these uh, uh, these policies. Um, so I'm not I'm not familiar with uh, resource isolation, so I don't know if um, perhaps someone else can step up. Um, so I, I would I'm say- I'm not sure about resource isolation, but for security, uh, there are some applications we have done also in the past, yes. But I think I interrupted Rolf that wanted to say something. No, no, I just wanted to say the same. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, thank you. So <laughs> there, don't hesitate to raise your hand or uh, or uh, ask questions in the chat if. Uh, uh, I have uh, raised my hand. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes, I can hear you. I didn't saw your, didn't see your hand, but please go, please go. Uh, hello, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, just a question about uh, uh, in the slide after this one, mm -hmm. the, the general, okay, this one, mm -hmm. this is a nice slide. Uh, there, is, there is also this featured synchronization types, basically depending on which features, uh, which mm -hmm. configuration is active, there, there are different uh, mm -hmm. synchronization types. I was wondering whether it could be possible to have uh, like discording synchronization types. For example, uh, a situation in which features are activated, but their synchronization types uh, are not compliant. For example, mm -hmm. one is uh, one synchronization type is one to one, and the other is uh, two with two, for example. No? So they cannot be both together uh, satisfied. I was wondering whether this is possible. Um, well, right in, in this, uh, the way that we model this now, I, I think no, because um, we here we we have to. This is a total function, so for each configuration and for each action, it's going to uh, give a synchronization type. So you will never okay. have a different synchronization type for an action in the same configuration. Okay, okay, sorry, just because I was okay. only looking seeing one feature, so I was. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, feature. well, yeah. In this case, uh, the configurations only have one feature, so. Okay, uh, but yeah. No, in the, in, on the slide, you see only one feature. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are further definitions for the other feature. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. okay, perfect. Thank you. Are there other questions? If not, uh, thank you very much, uh, Guilhermina. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Nice talk. <laughs>